Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us again on Not Coming Soon, which is coming pretty soon after we, well, okay, we still have to edit, but we're recording this pretty quickly after posting the last one, so. Yeah, man, look at us. We're getting there. We hear you. We're like pros. We know you're hungry. Yeah. We know you're hungry for content, so we're, we're getting better at it. Now, thank you for joining us, like I said, and this week, we are starting a brand new story. Brand new. This is our third story. That's six weeks, Jeffrey. Wow. That's six weeks of video. That's actually surprising. I just did that math in my head. We got three ancient warrior, and we got mm -hmm. three... Uh, nope, that's my twin. Hey, this is episode 13. Whew. Woo -hoo -hoo. Wow. You're welcome, everyone. But before we dive into our next story... Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, we've been watching a lot of the same stuff, so I think we yes. can just like collab on all this. Yeah, yeah, I I would agree. I think we we're pretty on par on, mm. on most of our content watching. Yes. Um, what do we What do we want to start with? I think we've got a few options. What we do, do we do? We do. I, I think we start with what we do in the shadows. I think that's a good... Ah, uh, yes. What yeah. a lovely season this has been so far. So fun. A lot of fun. The This last night's episode was enjoyable, as always. The one before it, though, had me on the floor uncontrollably laughing. The one with... um, Or maybe it's the one before that. The I one think where the one before that. The, the elementary school? That. Or the... Yeah. Where he's trying to get him to school? Oh, my yeah. gosh. That was wonderful. That was just... It was like killer joke hit bam 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 you had no time to react or you didn't have no time to adjust so yeah <laughs> and then they bring in sal volcano <laughs> yeah we we have a real special place in our hearts for the impractical jokers yes um, the improbable just does the improbable <laughs> just does. <laughs> like yeah i i would say that there was a period of probably a couple years where the impractical jokers were just if nothing was on the tv that was what was oh, on yeah. the tv yep 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 yep. and that's we had a lot of that in the uh um the recorded section wow yeah what a time oh, man. auto record oh my goodness remember just, dvrs yes <laughs> had tons of big bang theory we had yep. like 50 svu episodes up in there Wow. Do you remember when you could only record one show at a time? I forgot about that. And then they released, you? it was like the Hopper or whatever, was the first one to like be like, hey, two shows on at one time. You don't want to record, you can't record them both? Now you can. Now you can. And now you can watch anything you could possibly imagine at the click of a button. At any time, with no need to, the, the benefit of the recording, truly, mm -hmm. Well, there was the flexibility of being able to watch it whenever, but truly yeah. it was to get rid of those commercials. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, well, but, maybe with these new ad tier plans, well, I guess, I guess you're over there with ad supported Hulu. Dude, it's, I, whoever's at Hulu doing this on purpose, I hate you <laughs> because you are, they, I swear to God, they purposefully make the ad like four times the volume mm -hmm. of the show to mm -hmm. piss you off and to buying. And so now it's just a point of pride. I'm, I'm not going to give you well, the satisfaction. Here's what's happening. They're increasing the prices of, of all Disney streaming services. Uh, so come December, uh, it will make sense to go on a joint or a bundle plan if you only want Disney Plus and Hulu uh, with no ads. It'll yep. make sense to do the, the bundle that includes ESPN Plus. Yes. I don't know what I'm going to use that for, but it's... 30 for 30, dude. <laughs> All the 30 for 30s. All the 30 for 30. Um, but the Hulu... Oh, so Hulu alone costs eleven ninety nine, and Disney Plus alone will cost ten ninety nine, something like that. And the bundle is going to cost nineteen ninety nine. So 
you know, when we lose, we save. Yes. Well, see, unfortunately, that's that's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, we'll just do uh-huh. a bundle when we get to that. But uh, right. we get Hulu essentially for free through Emily's uh, Spotify oh. subscription. Man. Sticky Uh-oh. wicket. That's stick. That's sticky. Yeah. Uh, but so, Hulu, what we do in the shadows. This yes. latest episode was called Pine Barrens, where they're out in the woods in the Pine Barrens. Mm-hmm. The, either the highest rated or the most famous episode of The Sopranos is called Pine Barrens. Oh. In which they are in the Pine Barrens and two bickering f- old friends. Oh my goodness. Um, are stuck out there and at, at odds with each other and they eventually come to somewhat of a reconciliation while while stuck in the woods. Got some great TV writers in there. You do. What it's I <laughs> Emily, my wife is mm-hmm. a like super super Sopranos fan, like super. And mm-hmm. We were, I was putting on the episode and she's like, did you see the title? I was like, no. And she's like, it's Pine Barrens. And I was like, all right. Okay. <laughs> and she's like, that's like the best episode of Sopranos. And so, <laughs> so like few out there that could actually know that. And there weren't any like huge Soprano references other than just the s- style the g- of general the concept. General concept. I thought they were going to like put in the theme song or something, but no. So like, think about, I mean, just like pretty much everybody that watched that episode. Yeah. Speaking of prestige TV, Better Call Saul just ended. Better Call Saul did just end. Can I get a review from you? I am somewhere, What this was season five? Six? Six? I think it's... I maybe have seen three seasons. I was watching it as it came out, and then Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere along the way, I I dropped. Uh, So I'll I'll eventually get back into it. But But, uh, before I say anything, though, what do you know? Because I know that the the cinema TV world has been a buzz. So what what have you stumbled upon? I haven't haven't seen anything. Oh, nothing? No. I assume that it has to end with him going to new mexico like to well that's the thing yeah. uh he's always in new mexico he is he always is? in albuquerque really yeah. yeah i don't even remember that well oh, okay fr- like before breaking bad yeah um jimmy mcgill yeah is always in albuquerque i'm pretty sure well um, i imagine he has to drop the mcgill he has to uh you know we have to we have to find him uh, where where we found him in Breaking Bad, basically. Yes, and I don't. I don't know what I. I don't want to. Yeah, do, do, because, I, thumbs up, thumbs I down. Would, I would. Oh, okay. See, well, see now, I've I've seen rave reviews. Rave people just flat out love it. Um. Which I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm not gonna say it's bad. I just the story of Better Call Saul, yeah, the TV show, yeah, is one thing, yeah. And I feel like the last two three episodes, totally different thing. Okay. And so that I lost the momentum, um, and it so it didn't end the way I thought it was going to. The last three episodes are very different from the rest of the entire show. Okay. Um, and it just threw me off a little bit. Okay. Uh, That's fair. So I, I, yeah. And which, and I think this potentially could be remedied through a comprehensive rewatch. Mm. Um, okay. I had to watch these week one week at a time. Right. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. So I'll have to come back and revisit that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Heading back to Hulu. You saw Prey? I did see Prey. I remember I remember I read like months ago. Yeah. That they were going I saw that there was gonna be a movie called Prey and I a little more digging saw that it was a Predator prequel and I was like, Nice. Yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. And it turned out to be extremely cool. Yeah. So it's well it feels so weird 
that that kind of movie was just a, here you go, it's on Hulu. I know. I feel like there wasn't a real ad campaign. There wasn't, the, there was no awareness of this happening. It was just like, all right, thanks. Here, here you go. Here's, on, here's yeah. it on Hulu, uh, which I like and I don't like because I yeah. like that I was able to just watch Prey and it was awesome. Very cool. Yes. Uh, <laughs> wow. And, Very cool. But at the same time, it looks and feels like a movie that would be great on a big screen. screen. Yeah. Completely agree. Completely agree. Uh, I saw a lot of stuff for it, mostly because on Explore, every time I saw anything related to it, I clicked on it. So yeah. anything. So it got in my, got in my algorithm. Uh but yeah, I mean, not only would it have been cool on the big screen, it would have done quite well, I would say, at the Bucks office. I would, think, I would think so. I think there's interest. Yeah, because, I, I mean, you, you have enough there with just the Predator creature character that people are interested. Yeah. And then it came out, when it came out with the tomato score and initial reviews, I was like, oh, shoot, okay. Yeah. Because the last few have been, I did enjoy Predators. It's it, like people have issues with predators, but I did enjoy it. It's very cool. It's a yeah. um, big, big time cast. Uh, the predator, the predator, fell pretty short for me. You mentioned okay. a lot of uh, issues on production with the predator. Yeah. So I've spent this last week uh, doing a real deep dive. I have yet to visit the predator, which <laughs> I, I still haven't seen. Uh, period. I had seen the the previous films and I did rewatch all of those. So I watched Prey. I was like, "Wow, this character is pretty cool." Uh, yeah. That that scene where he fights a bear. Oh my gosh, that was so sick. Um, yeah, it just wrestles him. Yeah, just wrestles his bear. Oh, uh, yeah. And they they did it in in a very cool way where it wasn't like a carbon copy of like no the yes. the first movie or, or any of the other predator movies like and that was more apparent as i did the rewatch because it's like a similar it's a con it's the same concept right you have a super deadly creature that is hunting mm -hmm. the most dangerous game right yeah which i would argue is well i guess i guess because they keep killing the predator the predator kind of sucks right i was just gonna after you finish i was gonna say this predator is oh for five yeah. <laughs> i guess he, he kills an alien in one of the avps but yeah uh... yeah but he gets his he gets his butt kicked in avp like he he should dominate alien is a savage creature without much thought predator is this sentient being who yeah. is clever and cunning and Come on. <laughs> just to do this as an actual through line like you have predator which is a group of uh roided out muscle yep. military men the, the muscles on them i haven't that's like unreal predator the original movie all the all the military men are ridiculously ripped you got uh, that makes more sense yeah <laughs> Uh, Carl Sorry. Weathers and and Arnold Schwarzenegger's handshake. Oh God, yeah. iconic. That one was uh, they were going out into this into this area to like stop like uh, take out some drug deal some big big drug deal. Well, that wasn't um, that wasn't what they were told. It was supposed to be just a little search search and rescue action, wasn't it? Yes, it was supposed to be a search and rescue, and it and uh, they got except a. What's his name? What's his name? New Carl Weathers. New Carl Weathers. New. That's right. Uh, Carl Weathers. New the whole time. Yes. It was supposed to be a search and rescue, and then uh, it was actually uh, stopping some drug deal, and there just happened mm -hmm. to be this creature in the woods. But that was just this monster hunting down everybody until it was one person left, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was Arnold. Of course. Of course. He got him. Got the yep. best of him. That was mm -hmm. sick. It was such a great movie, and it was original. Yeah, like can yeah. you can you believe that somebody was just like Predator? It's a 
it's just a giant tall humanoid creature with this awesome mask who's invisible and bleeds neon green and has this nasty alien face yeah, that is whoever really cool. dreamt up that face well done yeah well done uh i i have a tidbit i don't know for sure this is uh-huh. true so google it it's it's fun to think about so here you go Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason they came up with the predator was it was like after like the fourth Rocky movie and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, we're running out of things to throw at Sylvester Stallone. So somebody mm-hmm. was like, Oh, what if it's this massive alien thing? Huh. Right. <laughs> they like, we're trying yeah, to come honestly. up, jokingly come up with what could, what should we throw at uh, Rocky next? Rocky. After <laughs> Drogo yeah. or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Uh, so that may be true. That may not be true. It's fun. It's fun. It's just fun. So I keep cutting off your Predator Thunder. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, nah, dude, don't don't even worry. So Predator Two. <laughs> um Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Danny Glover, Bill Paxton, bringing the heat. I think uh yep. Gary Busey as well. Gary Busey um, in that? I believe so. Oh man. Gary Busey, I believe, is the agent who's trying to capture the yes. Predator. Yes. Yes. Yes, they <laughs> they think of everything. Mm-hmm. They uh, they know that the predator can see infrared light. Right. So they carry. They put uh, put heat shielding suits on. Genius. Walking around with giant floodlights. Yes. That just shoot light. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and the don't Amazing. they have the like uh, uh, fire They're extinguisher like with, with ice? Yeah, with thing? like. Liquid, I- liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen. And I, I like yeah. how when all hell breaks loose, they're just like, that's their defense. And yeah. he's just mowing them down because what yeah. is that going to do? But the, the meat locracy, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So continue on. Um, predators next. Predators. Well, with, pre- sorry, going back oh, to, to Predator, with, with something, something that really kind of took me out of it was that it was scored by the same guy who did uh, Back to the Future. Oh. And it's very similar music. <laughs> so the first Predator? Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, just go, oh, go and wait, listen to yeah. the Predator score for a little bit and come back to me and tell me it doesn't sound like a good amount of uh, Back to the Future. So mm. yeah, that took me I out of it a little bit. And then... And then that score is like a through line for the the whole yeah, yeah. franchise, um, but Predators, a little bit of a reboot for the the franchise. I did not touch any of the Alien versus Predator franchise. Oh, I think um, you, you're okay with not doing that. Yeah, yeah. Requiem. Um, Adrian Brody bring the heat as a uh, action star lead. Oh yeah. That cast, that cast is pretty crazy. Well, yeah. I mean, you think about it, the cast of Predator was pretty crazy. The original, was, where yeah. you got Schwarzenegger, Carl, Carl Weathers, um, Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura, um, that's right. Mm-hmm. Billy. Billy? Billy! No, oh, Billy! Yeah. That was a move. Um, I'm going to stand on this fallen tree with a machete and attempt... What are you doing? Yeah. Bill. I'm going to yeah. say, I'm going to... Give him some time. No, no, you're not. Go ahead. Predators. 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 They drop them on a yeah. predator planet, and it's just Boom. like a hunting preserve. Killer. Yeah. Yeah. It was sick. Yeah. What a sick concept. Yeah. Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Bringing the heat. Topher Grace. Um, on Topher fire. Grace. <laughs> Unbelievable performance. Uh, Topher un- Grace. That's cool. I, I kind of like that they did that, where, where it's like, why is this guy here? But yeah. the predator knows. You can see into your heart. Um, oh, yeah. So Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, well, a little bit of a spoiler, but <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's my bad. We'll cut that. Cut that. No, cut no, that, no. Uh, um, so maybe not Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, who knows? Watch it. Um, I thought that that movie was filled with very cool ideas. Yes. Maybe not cohesive 
totally like it as a as a totality but i i enjoyed yeah. it i thought it was yeah really I, cool. I thought it was very cool i i liked it better than predator 2 oh by far yeah. by far yeah yeah for yeah. sure and one uh, interesting point that comes out of predators is them saying that they adapt so like they're there all right hey try your best um but every time they lose they come back better so i guess it does make some sense that the predator loses every time yeah. because they have to adjust. Right. The way in which the predator is beat in the original, the tree falls on him. And in predators, oh. there's a dead person that they come across from the previous batch of people that had set up a trap that would crush right. the predator with a tree. Right. So... They do adapt. That's true. Well, and do you... They remember. They remember. But it's also cool that they directly reference the first one when... Um, yes, she, she is. She's talking yeah. to Adrian Brody, and it's like, mm. a, one came upon a team, and where did they go? So, a Guatemala. Guatemala? In Guatemala. Yep. One got out. Very cool. So, pred the, the Predator is next on the list. The, what is that, 2016... 20... Uh, I, it's at least 2018. Oh, 2018. Okay. I think yeah. 2018, 2017. Because I know yeah. Carolyn and I went to see it at Purdue. And my freshman oh. year at Purdue was 2016. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, troubled. Troubled production. Yeah. But Keegan, Michael Key. Yeah. There's a lot of people in it. Yeah, there is. Um, there was a lot of people in Predators. I, for, I forgot Mer Mahershal Ali is in it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And Walton Goggins. Walton Goggins. Lest we forget. Dude, I freaking love Walton Goggins. <laughs> Walton do you watch Goggins. do you watch um uh The Righteous Gemstones? The Righteous No, I do not watch the Righteous Gemstones. It's hilarious. It's about a, a mega church family. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Excellent. HBO. <laughs> it's uh nice. Danny McBride and um uh Walton Goggins oh, and Wow. John Goodman. Yeah, John Goodman and oh. Adam Devine. Nice. Give that yeah. a look. See, cool, cool, very cool. Uh, I I think to last point that we can say on the predator, and we can move on. But yeah. prey, I think why it does such a good job is one, not the story not being that there's a predator necessarily. I mean, like yes, obviously mm. that's what driving it, but there's a lot else, a lot of other stuff going on. Um, yeah, they don't rely on it. It's a huge yeah. part, obviously, but yeah, and. It's similar to the first one where you know how the first one, you don't see the Predator in its full form until like the very end, mm. which is also they sat on that character design mm -hmm. whole movie until the final yeah. reveal. Same kind of thing. He's hidden. He's invisible or yeah. he's you just see the back of him for the majority of the movie. And then he a little bit earlier than Predator, but it's the suspense and the mystery of it. Great. Yeah. Great piece. It was right. directed by the same guy who directed... Have you seen 10 Cloverfield Lane? Uh, no, I haven't seen that one. I've seen Cloverfield. That one's, that one's very good. It's like adjacent to the Cloverfield universe. Mm -hmm. where it's like aliens. Yeah. Um, but it is not alien heavy at all. It's very much more oh. like a, a thriller than, than a sci-fi. Isn't John Goodman in that? Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Did you watch Cloverfield then? No. I have, That's okay. the only thing that I've experienced in the Cloverfield <laughs> arena. See, I think I'm kind of turned off to the... I, I don't think to watch the other Cloverfield ones because I watched Cloverfield and I was like... Okay. 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 Yeah. Well, the, I would not imagine that there is any through line between yeah. uh, Clo 10 Cloverfield Lane and, and Cloverfield. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll give that a whirl. So we talked about Wolverine and Shadows. Yeah. Talked about Predator. Yeah. Talked about... We're going to talk about uh, Bullet Train. Bullet Train. I did see Bullet Train in the theaters opening night. Nice. <laughs> uh, I, it, go ahead. If there's, if there's one piece of information that you need to know about myself <laughs> is that I... I will do anything for Brad Pitt. <laughs> um, 
it's not healthy. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it is obsession level, but I would say that it's bordering on it. So well, he's just such an endearing guy. He's an endearing guy. He's a compelling performer is what it is. <laughs> he's, a, he's a compelling performer. Um, yeah, no, unfortunately, I have not seen Bullet Train. Um, and it, uh, Emily, it's kind of the bane of her existence. Okay. I think, I think what it was, we saw a couple of movies in theaters back to back pretty close together. Uh, okay. So we saw the Bullet Train trailer. Yes, you probably three saw times it a lot. Pretty close together. And I don't think it was a particularly great trailer. People give way too much information in trailers these days, yes. and it needs to stop. Wait, you you get the people's mouth watering, get them yeah. intrigued. Don't show mm-hmm. me half the movie. Right. Um. Yeah, I, that's neither here nor there, but. Yeah, so now every time we see the trailer or we see a poster for it or we were even mm-hmm. watching something and the words bullet and train yeah, were next to each other and she looks at me. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with it. It's a very enjoyable movie. It's uh, very much uh, action heavy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, directed by, uh, I believe... The co-director of John Wick. Okay. Um, also, Brad Pitt's stunt double from the '90s. No um, way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, Isn't that fun? It's fun. But I think that the the idea here was Brad Pitt got his Oscar, and he fun. was like, "Let's have some fun, baby." Let's. That's what I was gonna say. It, it doesn't really. F- feel like a Brett well you know what I'm often it's, I'm he I the boundaries are always tested of what feels like a Brad Pitt movie you got World yeah. War Z which I wouldn't think although watching World mm-hmm. War Z in post COVID times is interesting uh and what's another one I was just thinking of, oh uh, The Lost City <laughs> The Lost City The Lost City dude's just having a good time because remember that time yeah. where he's like I'm just gonna be a producer I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm, not gonna, I'm just gonna be producer, guys. <laughs> and now here he is, all these fun roles. So how old is? I that? would say that this performance is more akin to uh, the burn after reading, uh, slapstick Shoot. Brad Pitt. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a really interesting look for him. I wouldn't uh-huh. say that. It's my favorite version of mm-hmm. Brad Pitt, but I had a great time nice. with it. Did you see, he won. and there's a lot of great people in the supporting cast, and they all look great. Aaron Taylor Johnson, oh my gosh, he looks so good in this movie. Nice. So glad I casted him. Yeah, in. yeah, we were, we were jumping on uh, whatever jumping on movie the wagon. we did. <laughs> yeah, did you see Brad Pitt's uh, attire at the premiere? At the premiere? Oh yeah, the like tracksuit. Oh no, dude, they're. So he apparently wore a tracksuit, but he, he was wearing like a dress or a skirt. Oh, Turn yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. He was just having a good time. You can do anything. Yeah. Cool. Make him wear anything and look good. It's very... It's ridiculous. I know. The guy, it's unfair. The guy has be. I'm looking at him. I'm like, why don't guys get to wear that? And I'm like, oh, because he's Brad Pitt. And I was just like, look at him. You yeah. Dress however he wants. No, he looks, he looks good in those ratty long sleeve over uh, or short sleeve over long sleeve looks you know that like waffle waffle long sleeve with like just a a ripped t-shirt on on top and it's just like something like he could go to like old navy and just pick anything off the shelf throw it on and be like oh man come on (laughs) come on and then yeah and let us not even go to the levels of him and oceans ridiculous he's got the like silk shirt the the i always thought i could do this i can't no, no. because no human can actually no, do this the, the, like where he rolls up the sleeve but it's not like tucked or anything it's just like flipped up doing whatever no and he's just got he's got a hand tattoo he makes a hand tattoo look good it's ridiculous it's unreal and i'm like i should get that no i shouldn't no, no I shouldn't. because no 
actual human looks good in the attire or the uh, or the tattoos that he has in that. No, no, no. Is it just the symmetry of the man? Is it is? I don't, I don't know. know. What is? Objective beauty is a weird thing, folks. It is weird. Yeah. But objectively. Objectively is. is man can get it. Yeah. <laughs> so bullet train. I'll. I'll. What studio is that? I don't know. Sony. Sony. Oh. oh yes. You know how you know it's Sony? It's because Sony is like getting out of the phone game, but they still make phones. So all of the phones in this movie are the most ridiculous <laughs> thing. There's like sliders and flip phones. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. It's amazing. Nice. That away, Sony. Way to hang on there. Yeah. You're going to yeah. come back. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. It'll be all right. <laughs> Sony, so darn. Do they, does their stuff go on anything? I was hoping you were going to say Warner Brothers so I can watch um, it on HBO Max. I mean, we'll see. So, um I think Sony is pretty liberal about spreading their stuff mm. around to different spree- streaming services. They don't have one. Right. So most of their stuff, but I feel like most of their stuff ends up on a streaming service somewhere, yeah. but it's random. Yeah. Wouldn't you, yeah. I, I, especially at this point where there's so many different streaming services, wouldn't it be a good move to just don't start your own, don't pay for the infrastructure yeah. and just get the licensing fees from all these other guys that yeah. are tanking? Yeah. The concern, the concern is that the streaming companies are going to just make their own stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we're seeing what happens when you Can't, only yeah, rely exactly. on your own Can't stuff. And Netflix has got Stranger Things and... Yep. Did you watch The Gray Man? I did watch The Gray Man. Cool. Do I remember anything from The Gray Man? Gray Man? No. Uh, I'm ever going to watch The Gray Man again? No. No. Uh, I remember him hiding behind a bench. I, yeah. Well, hold up, though. The fight at the end was visually stunning. Oh, that was a great so fight scene. The Russo, brothers, the Russo brothers have very cool ideas about situations in action movies. Yeah. But I don't know if they can cohesively... Right make a movie around them that's not one with captain america yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're they actually i think they approached um chris evans to be the brian gosling character the good guy i think they hmm. i think that was the original approach and I, I can't remember if it was evans i think his i think yeah i think his idea of his career is to not be get away from captain america, captain america. yeah yeah yeah. I would like to talk about Nope if we have some time. Yeah. First of all, yeah. all you psychopaths out there that go watch these horror movies that I saw the trailers for, what is wrong with you? I had to close my eyes the entire like five or six trailers before the movie started because I was petrified just from the trailer. I like I'm not gonna sleep if I'm watching this. So I was harsh. But actually, you know what? More power to you. That's impressive that you can watch that stuff and sleep at night. I, you know what? That's impressive. Yeah, smile. Did you? Is that the that one? That one really got to me. I did not like that one whatsoever. I, I saw one. I saw a, a trailer for Smile when we went to see where the crawdads sing. Okay, and it was a couple couple weeks ago. And yeah, literally the the a whole trailer was just somebody walking past a room stopping going into the room and somebody's just sitting on the bed like yeah yeah and and that was it so and then it just said smile and i was like well that's terrible and it just like kept zooming in and getting louder Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then nothing i don't think anything actually happened in the trailer uh and it just says smile so then when i saw what was happening i closed my eyes i just can't no no and why is it the trailer's job to shout at you and make you afraid uh Okay, so before anyway. we before we jump into yeah. to no, Sorry. which I don't think is anywhere at the same caliber of scariness no. as the just pure jump scariness and creepiness of the trailers that played before it. Absolutely. Another yeah. trailer that played before it for me was the Oppenheimer uh, uh, teaser. Now, yes. 
this trailer played in a time that time slot that I have never seen before. Nope, me neither. It it was after Nicole. Yeah. It was after the Welcome to Dolby Cinema. And then and then it plays the Oppenheimer teaser. And I thought that the movie was starting. And I was like, what is going on? This is such a, like, I did not think that this is how this movie would open. The opening of Nope was also not how I thought the opening no. of Nope was going to happen. But the no. teaser trailer for Oppenheimer, oh man, there's so many friggin' people in that movie. It's going to be ridiculous. Man, I got, that was electric. When, yeah. I, when I realized what was happening. I think it was uh, nuclear. Nice. Nice. Oh my gosh. That's, I'm not going to get my hopes too high. Yeah. Although I, I'm, I'm sure I'm safe in doing that, knowing who's directing. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that I finally see something about it, even though it's a full year away. Yes? Yeah. In July 23? I'm pretty sure, yeah. So, got to wait. Mm. No, that's going to be sick. Oppenheimer. But yeah, no... I don't fully know when the like studio cards ended and when the movie began because there was the it's like monkey paw studio yeah was that part no that's that's uh that's a real thing that's Jordan Peele's company is it yeah oh that's my bad I didn't didn't realize that sorry about that well I was so I was like first of all that was pretty I just I I know that because it played um for us. One because it was the teacup from, uh, from what's Get it out. called? Get, Get out. out. That makes sense. Um, okay. Yep. And then it played in another trailer for a movie that he's producing. Um, oh, with okay. Sterling okay. K. Brown, Sterling K. Brown, oh, and nice. Regina Hall. Nice. Um, it's good but yeah. 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 Well, so I that was creepy. <laughs> the the monkey paws thing. And then it goes to a monkey, and I'm like, "Right, okay, is this still the like right. studio card? What, what's going on here?" And oh, uh, it's so uneasy. Felt Monkeys... like the Family Guy scene. What? Felt like the Family Guy scene. Which one? Where he's like sitting in the movie theater, and they're just oh, like all the title cards, yes. and he's like gets excited for the movie to start, and then it's just like. A mermaid swimming and then it like freeze frames and it's a tile card. <laughs> yes. That is a good that's a good one. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's funny. But was that the only No. Who what's the other production company? And what studio? Uh I believe it's Universal. Universal. And I believe that I too, I think. Uh I believe that Oppenheimer is also universal. It'll be Christopher Nolan's first universal movie after his jump from Warner Brothers over the handling of HBO Max straight to streaming things. Did they try to hardball Christopher Nolan, do you think? Um, universal or, or no, uh, Warner Brothers? Warner Brothers. Yeah, I don't know. It, Good luck with that. It, the man doesn't have well, a phone. <laughs> It, to, to me, what I think happened was they de- made the decision to go day and date theater and HBO Max. And even though Tenet wasn't part of that, uh, Christopher Nolan was upset over the handling of that situation because they didn't fully let the filmmakers know that mm. this was happening. Mm. So you had Dune that was... In the theaters and on streaming at the same, on the same day, yeah. and that was made for the theater. Yeah, can yeah. you imagine how? Because that did well at the, at the box office. Imagine yeah. how good that would have done. Oh my god! If people couldn't, because I think I I still went to see it. Um, I think I did too. And yeah. that's I watch I watched it first in theaters before I watched it on regular TV. Yeah, uh, on streaming, but. Okay, so Universal. I think it was just Universal and Monkey Paw, which yeah, I guess he's going all me. in on the story for Nope as one of his uh, signature, um, yeah, calling cards. But uh, so monkeys make me uneasy. Not in the zoo; they're fine in the zoo for some reason. But like Planet of the Apes, I felt like yeah, the especially the later well, 
only the later one the newer ones i am very uneasy the whole time just because i know an ape can mess you up very yeah. easily so i was so on it and then he looks at the camera and i just i was mortified like terrified yeah and i'm like i, I don't even know if this is part of the movie yet I can't, i'm not even sure so and so, I, I, as the movie ended i was kind of sitting there like okay but the more i thought about it the the yeah. the smart of that movie is and what yeah. it, what it means and what it's trying to say yeah, I will have to watch it again, knowing everything. Right, because I feel like I'll have a greater appreciation for it than I did when I. I yeah, I I really liked it. Well, I really liked the first like seventy five percent of the movie. I really really liked it. I I think that there's it's a toss up of the relevancy of the monkey if he like actually kind of weaved that. In that's, well enough. That's what I think. I think it's the it's just missing one big tie-in. It does yeah. if you think about the little parts yeah. of it, which is why yeah. I, when I'm the more I think about it, the more I like it. But I, I, you're right. I think if there's one a little bit more in your face connection, mm-hmm. um, that ties the whole thing together. I think that's just the little piece it was missing. Yeah, and then the monster reveals, like we talked about before. Yeah, yeah, just doesn't do it. But do it for you. Very much enjoyed the movie. Yeah. I was 100% convinced, and I'm not giving anything really away by saying this, that in the trailers, because you see little glimpses of the thing in the sky, mm-hmm. um, I was 100% convinced, knowing like it was on a ranch and it, I see people wearing cowboy hats, I was 100% convinced that it was going to be a massive floating cowboy hat. 100% convinced. And in the, like, the first couple glimpses you get, uh-huh. I'm like, that's, that's a freaking cowboy hat, I'm telling you. Yeah. It wasn't. But <laughs> I, I totally thought it was. Uh, I wish I was right. That would have been cool. That would have been the call of the century. Yeah. I did not know that Keith David was in this movie. Yeah. So when it opened until... up on Keith David, I was like... Yeah. I heard his he voice, doing... and I'm like, is that Keith yeah. David? I didn't see him on the thing, so but that's Keith yeah. David. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it, and I, I really enjoyed the, I think that they, the, like we talked about before, that the Kiki Palmer and Danny yes. Kaluuya, Kaluuya um, balancing each other's Absolutely. energy. Yes. Yeah. I'm, Kiki Palmer's in something, oh, she's in Lightyear. She's the um, yeah. young Hawthorne in Lightyear. I like that she's yeah. revitalizing that career. I feel like she's been there for a while, but yeah, she's a, she's a delight, and uh, no, yeah. very good. Uh, and for those of you who are, if you're concerned about watching Nope on a fear factor level, you shouldn't be. There's, I I was because that, like we said, that trailer was yeah. haunting. Yeah. Um, there's a practical reason for everything that happens in the movie, of obviously other than the main thing. Well, I don't know if I should say that, <laughs> but. Like weird stuff in the trailer that you're like, oh, that's that's zombies. Oh, it's yeah. aliens. It's ghosts. It's whatever. Um, you'll be all right. There's only one yeah. scene that, like, if I had kept my eyes open for, wouldn't have. Um, yeah. Nose for Ra to that would have been hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was the only thing. I'm glad I closed my eyes because I, the first time they cut and it wasn't there before and now it's there and you can barely see it and you're not even sure oh, if yeah. you're supposed to be seeing like if that's even right. And it's just down yeah. there not moving for a bit and you're like, is that supposed to be there? I closed my eyes. I'm like, I'm, I can't do this. I, I see what I see that. And I'm not, I can't. But other than that, it's just more disturbing than scary, I would say. I wouldn't even say it's disturbing. Like, I, I would say, well, yeah, there's some... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I would say that the most of the things in the trailer that look like they're scary are just kind of more... They are... It is definitely more of a thriller yes. than a horror. Absolutely. And I, I enjoyed it a lot. All right. Well, enough of, enough of uh, current events. Well, enough of Let's that. talk about something yeah. that's not coming soon. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We we really dabbled uh, quite a bit there. 
That's okay. You can, you know what? I, I'm just, it's it's fun to talk about things that exist. Yeah. It's fun. We're just having fun here. Yeah. You know? And I'm sure you are too. Sure. But anyway, person? yeah. Person? Me? Hi, by the way, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, future <laughs> us. Hope you you guys are enjoying. Hope the Myers brothers are enjoying this. If Sh- you're not one of the two of us, drop a comment. Yeah, you know, that would Give be us so a like. sick. That would be so fun. A just, channel sub. Yeah, you you can even trash us. Like, put a bad comment in there. I just want to know what do you guys. Yeah. think? Yeah, tell us how we can improve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We probably won't do it, but. You can tell <laughs> us. Uh. So anyway, not coming soon. Yeah, so you, you have a, a story for us, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go high. Just pure, I mean, this is the introductory. So here. We, yeah, get the, it. The title of this project, I'm thinking, is the sequel. And this hell is, yeah, this is the first of its kind, uh, although called the sequel. And we follow a director. Who, while his main focus is more artistic and emotional films, gets the opportunity to do a book adaptation for a big, big name studio. He does it successful, gets money to be able to go do his other stuff. But wait, contract, we want you to do a sequel. And he's like, no, that makes no sense because the book wrapped it up so well in our movie and that, that makes no sense. And they're like, yes. that sucks, but you're going to do it. <laughs> so yes. um, they bring him back for it. Soul crushing work. He goes to, so at right when they're asking him to do the new one, he's wrapping up production on a film that's more of a passion project. Mm-hmm. And he goes to the premiere. Hardly anyone's there. He sits, he, it's, he's pissed the whole time and he's thinking like, wow, now I got to do the freaking, now I got to do the sequel and it's going to suck and all that. And uh, he gets a standing O, but as he's leaving, he's kidnapped. 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 Fanatic literary fans will not have a sequel. Little do they know, he completely agrees. Uh, so... I don't have I don't have a firm where we go from there. I do want it to end with them announcing a third one. Yes. That's okay. How I wanted, okay. That's how I wanted it to end. Okay. Okay. So over the course of the movie, yes. you want them to have just come out of. Um, maybe we start them at the premiere of the first one. Mm-hmm. It goes through some like. Awesome. Woohoo. Great. Congratulations. This is a great, this is yeah. a great literary adaptation. Now you can go back and do, uh, so maybe the book is a little bit more action heavy blockbustery. Yes. I was, so I had two thoughts there. I was thinking yeah. either the book is not that way and the studio uh-huh. pushes for it to be that way. Similar to oh. like, um, Californication where his book is yes. called love is dead or or God is Dead, I think is the name of the book. And the movie adaptation is this crazy little thing called Love is the name of yeah. the movie. <laughs> so, for, so I have it both ways. Either it's an action book um, or it's not. And they kind of force strong arm okay. into making it that way. Okay. Uh, okay, so he, so he, makes, the, he makes the adaptation. Yes. It's very well received. Yes. Uh, critically and... Uh, box office wise, yeah, uh, enough so it can even be lackluster it's... received critically. I think it's sh- okay. I, yeah, I, probably better that it's yeah. lackluster critically, but well received uh, from a, a blockbuster standpoint. Yes, yes. Um, then he goes off and he does his personal passion project because yeah. he's get, gotten enough. Uh, he's gotten enough juice to to go and do right. what he wants to do. Right. And then, so we're talking about the development of three movies. Yeah, so I think in this. we can even not have them at the premiere. I think it could be late in the theatrical run of the book adaptation. 
when they okay. when they announce the sequel and he like sees it on his phone without like it's not like yeah that, the studio doesn't tell him the first time he hears it he just sees it on cinema blend nice. or yes. whatever yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and so at that point he's already wrapping up edits and stuff of this passion project so it's okay. not super far into the movie that he's kidnapped at the premiere of, okay of so he's kidnapped at the pr- premiere of his passion project yes right after they right. announced the sequel okay the book adaptation so they kidnap him yes and they're trying to get him to not make a sequel yes and so th- th- here's where i'm thinking this goes yeah he agrees and he tries to explain like hey i agree this should not be made so they come up with the idea to make it absurd and so that's okay. where we and that, so the vibe of this movie is kind of pop starry, and you just take yeah. all the sequel cliches through the roof to the moon. Okay, um, and they make it, they put it together, and at the end, they still want to do a third one, and he's just like, "Nice, great. we can mull on." So, that. yeah. Oh, I love that. That's so fun. Yeah, I think it's um important in the modern age of cinema right now where you're kind of you kind of screwed trying to come up with original content what made me think of this too was um have you heard of vengeance the movie vengeance with uh yeah, yeah. i watched yeah watch I, I went to go see it yeah now, i we've been trying to see it it's on so it, we were looking for movie times less than a week of its initial release and we yeah. couldn't find anything that Very lined up window. yeah I mean, very small window we we saw it like the kind of, i think it was either the week or the week after it opened mm-hmm. and then and then we had some friends text us and they were like uh where did you see that uh because it's not in theaters but it's it, it was just pulled i guess really early yeah. it must not have done well well i mean no because it was like before i guess you can tell immediately but um yeah it was like a week after it had been released we looked all over it was playing like one yeah. or two showings throughout yeah. the day. There's like an eight tw- eight thirty p.m. showing and an eleven forty five. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we re- wanted to see it. B.J. Novak's directorial debut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Ashton Kutcher. Yeah. So it's just it, it's so hard for original content to do anything these days, which is yeah. sad. Um, I w- I will say it's one of the more pretentious movies that I've ever seen um but ashton kutcher is amazing and nice it. he's so good. good he needs to be in more yeah. things we walked out of the theater and we were like man we're missing out on a lot of ashton yeah i think i saw like stop being an investor man you got a talent yeah oh well. so get back in the get back in the movie room ashton jeez <laughs> we miss you you, you drop two and a half men on us and then leave? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, so we want wow. to say that. So like, that's what made me think, like, original content. It's a tough world for original content. Everything needs to be a sequel yeah. or based on something. Yeah. So we're going to take that to the max, baby. <laughs> we're going to... That's right. Maybe maybe oh we gosh. can inspire people to go watch some indie flicks. Maybe, maybe we'll get... There you go. Maybe get, we'll get the underground cinema world about. back on track, you know? Yeah. Let's do it. So. Sweet. The sequel. For your consideration. Yeah. For your consideration. <laughs> Feel free to uh, workshop that title. All right, yeah. I think uh, let's noodle on that. Yeah. And I, I love the... I love the sequel as a as a title and i love the direction of the that so i just had so it's pop starry but also a little hail caesar type yes well in regards to the production uh style and manic nature of sweet film all right all right yeah so i think we can we can think on it um and develop it more over the uh, course of these next two yeah, episodes. That's right. Um, give it a little, a little time to noodle and simmer. Oh yeah, noodle it. So, moving forward, do you, do you have a connection for me? I would like you to connect 
Maya Rudolph oh, to shoot. John Tutoro. John Tutoro. All right. Oh, man, I'm taking way too much time. I believe in you. Oh, God. Okay. Maya Rudolph. Dude, this is, uh, this is garbage. What is going on? I, I like panic and my head goes. To... Okay. All right. All right. Okay. My, I'm just gonna start mm -hmm. saying names, and we're gonna yeah. go. We're gonna go for it. Yeah. My Rudolph. No, John Turturro is in Transformers with Shia LaBeouf. Okay. Shia LaBeouf is in Fury with Brad Pitt. Okay. Brad Pitt is in Myriad of Films. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt is in um, Oceans. Okay. Oh, well, I could I could just skip this right now. Um, John Turturro is in Transformers with Bernie Mac, but what the else is Bernie Mac in? No, yeah, yeah. Oh, Bernie Mac is in Oceans. Yeah. With George Clooney. Well, John Turturro is in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou with George Clooney. There it is. Um, gosh. Uh, George Clooney is in. Um, You're not a huge Coen Brothers head, are you? Not as big. I should be bigger. Hmm. Did you? Oh, did you use Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? I did not. Oh. He's not in Burn After Reading, is he? I don't believe he is. Okay. Can Brad Pitt get me there? To my Rudolph? I feel like he's got to. Uh, he probably can. Brad Pitt. So. But that's not what I use. That's, that's not what you use. It, do you have one connection? Is it the John Turturro movie to this person, this person to... Yeah. Um, my Rudolph. Yeah. And it's in a, it's a Coen Brothers film. Yep. He's not in Men Who Stare at Goats. I'm not sure. Might be the Coen Brothers though. That's a great question. They don't. It's not in Ballad of Buster Scruggs, is he? Nope. Dude, what am I missing? Big one. <laughs> a a big one. Shoot. He's not in um. He's not in oh Country for All Men, is he? John Turturro? No. It's a big Cohen Brothers. Big movie. Lebowski. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So big Lebowski, which makes me think uh -huh. of um, obviously Jeff Bridges, and we watched Surfs Up the other day. That movie mm. is so funny. Okay, so John Turturro is in the Big Lebowski with. Yep. Jeff Bridges? No? Um, yes, but no. Well, yes, but no. Uh, did you use um, Steve Buscemi? Oh, Grown Ups. My Rudolph. Grown Ups. Yeah. <laughs> God. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Gosh. Well, hey, that was a good one. I think that's, I think we can call it at that. I think we should call it at that. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> All right. Oh. Well, I guess I'll wrap us up here. Yeah. Put a bow on it. Stick a fork in it. Well, as as always, it mm. has been a pleasure mm. to share with you, uh, mostly about current events yep. and a little bit about something that's not coming soon. Uh, <laughs> the playing with the format. Yeah. There's just a lot to talk about. There's a ton. There's and we so got much opinions. content out there. So much content, so many opinions, and uh, I just uh, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks for thanks for spending a little bit of it with us. Uh, if you had to watch it over the course of multiple days, more power to you. Really appreciate you came back, and have a wonderful day. Uh, just the best day that you could possibly have. <laughs> right after, right after you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, 
give us a comment. Uh, we love you. And we hope to see you again soon. Yeah. Um, I have been Jeff. Uh, I have been Ryan. We hope to see you someday at SDCC. San Diego Comic Con. I feel like that's where the big time <laughs> podcast. Well, we're going to have a panel one day and it's going to be awesome. And we're going to talk about this specific episode that everyone, of course, at that point will have listened to. And they're going to be like, they called it. So get us there. They called our shot. We're in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. If we see that you left a comment in the year 2022, we'll, um, we'll give you something. Kiss you right in the mouth. <laughs> Square on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, we'll do it. So, and with that, sweet dreams.